Hey, welcome to the show. Ashley and I are glad you're with us. Actress Claudia Wells became an overnight sensation back in 1985 as Michael J. Fox's girlfriend in the movie Back to the Future. Well, she actually never appeared in any of the sequels, and the reason was because she quit acting to get back at her mother. Well, Claudia contacted us to share her exclusive story of brokenness and redemption. It was the summer of 1985. 18-year-old actress Claudia Wells was making her big screen debut as Jennifer Parker, girlfriend in Steven Spielberg's blockbuster classic, Back to the Future. I'm excited I finally got a movie because it got down to me and one or two other girls probably 10, 12 times. And Michael J. Fox, I was excited about him because he's so cute. While the movie catapulted her to international fame, Claudia would soon fade into obscurity. The youngest of three, Claudia was a natural in front of the camera. By 12 years old, she was living in L.A. with her single, divorced mom and landing a number of small TV roles. She loved the work, attention, and the chance to be someone other than herself. My fun and joy was when the camera was on and I got to be a person and act because every single role I played, I got to take a part of me and express it. That's because at home, her alcoholic mother made sure her daughter knew the real Claudia was someone to be despised. I thought everyone grew up hearing, I regret the day you were ever born. I really thought that was a normal thing. I was either the greatest or I was worse than my father, worse than her mother. I don't know, she was, she was, it, it, it I didn't know who I was because I was told so many different things. Her mother burned through Claudia's money as she controlled every aspect of her daughter's life. That included her weight. I used to have to stand in front of my mom's bed and turn while she sat there and told me I was too fat. And I wasn't. I wasn't. Claudia became obsessed with being thin, always on a diet. Then, at 14, she was found in her bedroom unconscious after trying to overdose on her mother's prescription pills. That was my intention, completely. It was not a cry for help. It was a, I'm done. I don't deserve to be here anyway. I'm too fat. By the time 1982 rolled around, two years later, little had changed for the budding star. Only now, she was bulimic taking up to 60 laxatives a day. It was then she was cast in the TV series Herbie the Love Bug, starring Dean Jones. Claudia became friends with the late actor and his wife, Lori. He talked to me about the hole that was inside of me, and if I don't fill it with God, and if I don't fill it with Jesus Christ, it'll get filled with men and drugs and problems. So I said the sinner's prayer with Dean at lunch one day, and I became saved not really understanding anything that that meant, but God heard me. So Claudia continued to believe the voices in her head, telling her she was a mistake. Meanwhile, her acting career flourished, and in 1984, she landed a role in her first feature film, Back to the Future. I was terrified because I got a movie, and in my brain, I was thinking, oh no, my legs are gonna be so big, it's not just TV, I wonder if I'm skinny enough. The movie's success made Claudia an instant star. Then, after the movies released in 1985, her mom was diagnosed with cancer. After working in television two more years, Claudia called it quits, saying she needed to take care of her mother. I took care of her the best that I could. I was not in a place emotionally to do anything that had anything to do with acting. I was also angry, and I stopped acting because it was so important to my mom. Bulimia and later drugs and alcohol would control Claudia's life for years, until 1992 when she entered a rehab program that led to her eventual recovery. By then, she had opened a men's clothing store called Armani Wells. And even though she was moving forward in life, going to church, running a successful business, Claudia couldn't move past the pain of her childhood. I built brick walls in front of me physically in my brain. I built them and her yelling got softer and softer and softer. 
Then in 2008, she took a step closer to healing and God when her mother lost her battle with cancer. Claudia finally saw her as she was, a woman like herself who was broken. And I said, God, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry for the horrible things I said about her. I'm sorry for hurting her on purpose by destroying myself to the best of my ability. Please, will you forgive me? Then, a few years later, the voices of self-condemnation and guilt would finally be silenced. Then it occurred to me, wait a minute, why am I being so horrible to myself? Jesus died on the cross, and he took up all these horrible sins that I'm condemning myself for. And I said, I am not a mistake. I am not a mistake. And I was sobbing. I didn't even know that I thought it was a mistake. I just knew that she regretted the day I was born. And then I went up to the guy, the preacher, and I said, I'm not a mistake. And he hugged me, and I, I said, I'm not a mistake. Yeah, it's actually... Today, Claudia is still running her clothing store and has made several appearances on television. She even takes time to sign an autograph or two. God has given me such a level of peace, and it's from him. And I can prove, I am walking, talking, proof that God is real, that Jesus Christ exists. Every blessing comes from him. What an amazing story of just what God does in our lives. If we just allow him to come in and do what he wants to do, which is always to give us peace, to give us hope, to give us joy like we've never experienced to love on us like we've never experienced, to receive redemption and restoration. You just saw it with Claudia's relationship with her mother. Even though her mother had passed away, she experienced redemption in that relationship. And it was only through her relationship with Jesus. And I just want you to know today that you are not a mistake. You are not a mistake. That is exactly what Claudia heard from the Lord. And I believe that that is what God is saying over you today. No matter what you've heard, whether it's you heard that from a parent, from a loved one, from a sibling, from a friend, strangers. Friend, I'm here to tell you, God loves you. God sees you. And you are not the sum of your mistakes. You're not a mistake. But yet we all make mistakes in our brokenness because we're all broken, we're all sinful. But that is why Jesus came to this earth, so that he could bear the sins of the world, the mistakes that you and I have made in our past and in our present and will make in our future. He bore the sins of the world. He died for you and for me so that we could be in relationship with our Creator. You know, when God hears our prayers, when He sees you and me, He sees His Son. It was the atonement for our sins. Jesus died on the cross. And I'm also reminded of scripture that says, it was the joy set before Him that He died, chose to die on the cross. What exactly does that mean? That means that He saw you and he said, yeah, she is worth it. He is worth it. I also wanna share something with you. In, in the Bible, it says that it was actually one of the first times Jesus had preached something. And he said, repent, the kingdom of heaven has come near. And I just believe that that is what God is sharing with you today, repent, friend. We, we think that repentance is something so, so serious, so bleak, but repent actually in the Hebrew word, it's teshuvah. It means to return. Return to the Lord today, friend. Whether you're like Claudia and you prayed that sinner's prayer when you were younger, but you've walked really far away from God, or you've never prayed a prayer to ask the Lord into your heart, return to him today, friend. It's simple. All you have to do is just say, Jesus, I want you. I want you in my life. I'm sorry for my mistakes, but I believe 
that you are saying to me, I'm not a mistake, and that you have a purpose and a destiny over my life. If that is you, if you're feeling this, this tug in your spirit and in your heart today as you're watching this, return to the Father today. Return to Jesus like never before. Pray this simple prayer of returning, of repentance, of saying, I'm sorry, and just giving your life and surrendering it all to Jesus. Just pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, Jesus, Say his name out loud, Jesus, I cry out to you. Lord, I'm sorry for the things that I've done in my past, even in my present and even in the future. God, forgive me of my sins. I repent. I turn from my wicked ways and I look to you, Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Jesus, I believe that you died on that cross for me and my sins and for the sins of this world and that you resurrected three days later and that same resurrection power now lives in me because I declare that you are Lord of my life from this moment forward. Thank you, Jesus, for the healing that you're going to bring me even right now. Thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit that is touching me and filling me like never before. God, I love you and I choose you. Make me new today, a new creation in you, Jesus. I pray and ask all of these things, amen and amen. Friend, if you just prayed that prayer with me, please do one more thing. Just give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Share with somebody on the phone that you just gave your life to Jesus because we've got some amazing free resources that we can mail out to you or we can send them to you over email, digitally, whatever you want. Just give us a call, tell somebody, we're here for you 24-7, 1-800-700-7000. Well, Daniel Ritchie was born with no arms. So when it comes to everyday tasks like brushing his teeth, combing his hair, or making his coffee, he uses his feet. Even though Daniel learned to live independently, he still felt incomplete until he discovered the secret of contentment. Hey guys, my name is Daniel Ritchie, and I want to take a couple minutes just to share with you about what it means to be content in Christ because that's something I have struggled with my entire life because I was born without arms and I look around and I see the rest of everybody in my life uh, living life with hands and, and using their thumbs. And I look at what I do and who I am and, and, and I'm not that. And I know that, that my situation is never going to get better. And so I sit here and go, God, how am I gonna have joy? How am I gonna have peace when I know my situation, my physical situation is not gonna get any better? And I love what, what Paul says in Philippians chapter four, he just says, I've learned to be content in, in whatever I'm in, whether I have nothing, whether I have everything. And he goes on to say in, in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. And that's coming from a guy who writes those words as he sits in a prison cell, not knowing if he's gonna live or die, but he can say, I can be content in whatever I'm in. And it's simply because of Jesus. And that was something for me that I started to realize that my contentment doesn't come from having arms. My contentment doesn't come in my life getting better. My contentment is found in Jesus and in Jesus alone. That's the only thing that doesn't change. That's the only thing that doesn't go away. He's my hope in this life and in the next. And so if you're sitting there right now and thinking, God, my situation's not gonna get any better. How is there hope in this? Our hope isn't in this life. Our hope isn't in pain going away. Our hope is in Jesus, in his love for us, in his plan to use us, even in our pain, knowing that one day when faith becomes sight, our pain goes away. Wow, sometimes you just feel like a spiritual um, short, very small person. I mean, looking at his yes. faith, looking yes. at everything that he's gone through, I'm just like, wow, I'm just the perspective. But I'm also reminded of the scripture where Paul asked, you know, he's, he's saying there was something that he wanted God to take away. He paid, prayed three times. And then the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you in your weakness. My strength is yes. made perfect. Yeah, and I hear you. I mean, Daniel is uh, just what an example for yeah. our perspective. And we've talked about contentment in the last few minutes, and I, I heard a good definition once. Contentment is when what I have overshadows what I need. And if well, we can look at it that way about, you know, what do we really need and what do we have? I mean, a great spiritual lessons. We thank Daniel for sharing yeah, his story. Definitely. Here's an amazing story for you. Just 21 months old and in the ICU. 
The Watson's baby girl had fallen into a pond and they didn't know if she was alive or dead. All they knew was she desperately needed prayer. So what did they do? You're about to find out. Dixie County, 911. A panicked, scared teenager calling for help. My sister fell in a pond. The caller was 17-year-old Destiny Watson. Moments earlier, she discovered her 21-month-old sister, Nyla, face down in the water. Her body was cold and white stuff just running all out of her nose. It looked like there was no coming back. Clutching Nyla's lifeless body, Destiny ran to the house, calling out for her older sister, Chloe. I was shocked. I tried to speak to the police, but I couldn't. Destiny had to. Nyla wasn't breathing, and they couldn't find a pulse. For several minutes, the 911 operator guided Destiny and Chloe through CPR. Then, finally. Oh, she's breathing. She's breathing. Guys, she's breathing, but barely. When paramedics arrived moments later, the frightened teenagers called their parents to Bree and Dwayne at work. I don't think I really knew how to feel. It really hit me like, whoa, this is unthinkable. This is, this is unthinkable. Nyla had to be airlifted to University of Florida Health Chance Hospital in Gainesville, Florida. On the drive there, Tabri and Duane tried to make sense of what happened. All I basically was able to do was just keep repeating by his stripes, Nyla, you're healed. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't have words. All I know is I need Jesus, but I don't know what to say to him right now. Nyla was taken to the pediatric ICU, still unconscious and on life support. When Duane and Tabri walked in, the staff surrounding their baby girl stepped away. Nobody was saying anything, and in my mind, I'm thinking, is she alive? But I didn't want to ask anybody that. I didn't want to say that out of my mouth. What I saw was my baby, you know? I saw my baby girl, and, and she was just lying there, motionless. Part of me was still kind of in disbelief. And I just said, you will live and you will not die in the name of Jesus. Not really knowing where she was but wanting to believe that, that God would, would heal my baby. After hours of testing, a doctor brought news. Nyla had suffered an anoxic brain injury. She was in a deep coma and showed almost no brain activity. They also said it was unlikely Nyla would ever wake up. Even if she did, she would be in a vegetative state. Basically, she was, we were told she was dead at that point. I literally started screaming, no. She cannot tell me that. She cannot tell me that. God, you gave me this child. Like, no, I cannot be told this. I didn't want to accept that and wasn't going to accept it. And again, I just immediately just continued praying. By then, dozens of friends, pastors, and family members packed the waiting room, praying with Nyla's family for a miracle. By his stripes, she is healed. I just continue to repeat that over and over and over again. They're telling me there's nothing else they can do for my baby, but I know who can. I have to stand on the word of God and not their word. It really didn't matter what they said. Later that afternoon, Tabri was in Nyla's room with medical staff when suddenly... Nyla J just jumped her body, just, you know, just kind of jerked out of nowhere. God was sending us a message <laughs> that she was going to be OK. Doctors cautioned that it could be simply a nerve reaction, and they shouldn't get their hopes up. In the coming hours, though, the movements increased. Suspecting Nyla was having seizures, doctors put her under sedation and continued to monitor her through the night. The next day, they had seen no evidence of seizures, and even under sedation, Isla's body continued to move and respond. And by this point, I'm like laughing with God. I'm like, you are so cool. Like, he's just showing us that she's OK. One of Nyla's doctors agreed. She's like, what we witness is truly a miracle. The fact that she's moving is a miracle. Later that day, Nyla's heart and lungs were functioning on their own and doctors were able to take her off life support. 
They also brought Nyla out of sedation. When she woke up... My sweet baby Nyla, who just two days ago was basically pronounced dead. But God... She went from lifeless to no sedative being able to stop her from moving. She was ready to get up. As Nyla continued to recover, an MRI confirmed she had no brain damage. Then on New Year's Eve, four days after her brush with death, Nyla was cleared to go home. I was just overjoyed. That was one of the happiest moments of my life. Today, Nyla shows no effects from the trauma. And for her family, the events of that week showed them firsthand the goodness and mercy of God. I really had doubts about God, but after her incident, I would never again doubt that God exists. I know that I serve a big God who is real and he answers. And so we just can't wait to see, you know, what God does with the rest of her life. Thank you, Diva. That's right. You know, sometimes sitting here in this seat after watching stories like this, we don't always know what to say or have the words to say because it's so humbling to see God move in people's life. And we celebrate so much what God did for that precious family and the miracle that occurred. And we know also that many of you are discouraged and weak because you have a need. It may be you're praying for someone to literally survive and live, or there's other medical conditions, or you're just in deep depression. I don't know your condition. God knows it. And Ashley and I want to pray for you as this program concludes. Before we do, just please allow us to share a couple more encouraging reports. Here's one sent from Marion. And she said, you know, maybe some of you can relate to this. I used to be in total rebellion against God. I lived for myself. I always sought revenge for those who had hurt me. One day while watching the 700 Club, the host called out my name during the prayer time and said, Marion, God is comforting you. In that moment, I knew God saw me. I gave my life to him and now live a life of holiness solely for his glory. Wow. That's amazing. Well, here's another one. Here's a praise report from Facebook. This person said, I was in a horrible car accident where the vehicle flipped four times and landed on top of me. I cried out to God asking him to send his angels and lift this vehicle off of me. As soon as I said that, a man walked out in front of the vehicle, lifted the car off of me and helped me out. He disappeared and I never saw him again. Doctors had to go in through my stomach to replace the bottom side of my spleen and they told me I would be in a wheelchair by the time I turned 40. Today, I am 40, not in a wheelchair, and don't take any medications. That's what God does. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Andrew, let's just go straight in prayer. I just feel, I just feel a touch of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to start crying, but there's a lot of people who are desperate. Mm -hmm. And so God hears you. God sees you. God loves you. And so let's just go boldly to the throne room of grace and lift up your needs today to the Father. Father God, we just love you. We just say thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, that we can just cry out and you answer us. You don't ignore us, you love us. And so we just stand on that promise today that you are a loving Heavenly Father and you have not forsaken us. You have not forsaken our loved one who's in the hospital bed, who has a bleak um, doctor's report. No, we stand on the word of God, which is yes and amen to being fully healed and fully restored in the name and in the power of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray now for those who are waiting and waiting to see God move. And as a result of a lack of movement on God's part, as you see it, you're angry with him, even hostile. Where are you, Lord? I haven't experienced who you say you are. Father God, for those who are even envying other people's miracles or where they've seen you move on their behalf, Lord God, I just wanna pray for them that your Holy Spirit will minister specifically to them in their pain that is real. And that your Holy Spirit will comfort and encourage and we do pray for miracles, Lord. And in the meantime, we pray in that season of waiting that you become real and loving to them in a significant way in Jesus' name. Yeah, 
I just believe someone's watching and you are a loved one of someone who is in the hospital, even right now, that they are unconscious. Uh, they're having difficulty breathing. So there's tubes in their throat. The, the machines are having to breathe for them. If you are with that person, just put your hand on them right now. If you're not with them, think about them. Put their name, lift their name up right now. God, I just pray in the name of Jesus that they are healed from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. They will not have to have machines breathe for them. Whatever is causing this situation, this issue, God, I pray that it is gone in the name of Jesus and they will begin to breathe on their own and make a full recovery only by the power of you, Jesus, and in your name. Thank you, Lord. I just feel like marriages are being healed today and restored, spouses crying out for their marriage and saying, Lord, I need your peace in the midst of my marriage. Mm -hmm. God's bringing that today. Lord, we pray we think about heavenly things and not earthly things. We'll keep our mind focused on you and remember our first love in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. We're so glad you prayed with us. Here's a word from Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God bless you. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.